guys, welcome to my channel. I apologize in advance for any noise that you might hear. My dogs will not stop fighting and I can't kick them out of my room because they just come back up the stairs and scratch the door, so that would make more noise. Anyways, today I wanna be doing my January wrap-up video. And in the month of January, I read four books. Starting from the first one, I read, and can I just say, I think in general this year has sparked my love for reading again. I've always loved reading, but something just, I don't know, something just like kicked it off. And honestly, I think part of it was watching uh, one of the booktube videos. Um, her The username is... Um, Peru's projects and I just love watching her vlogs and her hauls and I don't know it just I think when you're watching someone talk about something that they're passionate about it even if it's not a subject that you're interested in for example particularly with um, fantasy books which isn't usually my cup of tea um, just hearing her talk about it made me want to start reading fantasy um, and I think this year in general I'm definitely gonna try uh, I don't know, dipping my toes in different genres. But again, that's not usually my cup of tea, but then I just really enjoy hearing different people talk about different books. I've always known about BookTube, but would never, have never fully like gotten into it. And this year I really wanna try um, being active on it. This is my first BookTube video, so I'm excited. Um, and yeah, in the month of January, like I said, I read four books, I just wanna talk about them. The first one was Confessions of a Shopaholic, and I actually have two copies of this book. The other one's right there. The other one doesn't look as shallow as this cover. It's actually a movie too, which I have not watched. It came out a while ago though. It's just, I don't know why I haven't watched it yet. It's just one of those things that I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like really need to be in the mood for. And I also heard it's not that good, so. Um, and book is always better anyways. But um, yeah, it's basically tells a story of a girl named Becky who just like the title states, she is a shopaholic and it's just really, really funny and lighthearted and has a lot of internal dialogue. Sophie Kinsella is honestly one of my favorite authors. I think she's so hilarious and she has such a way of, um, I don't know, I guess just wording the verbal like the internal, I guess, panic and real life emotions, which I find it so funny. And she has an entire Shopaholic series, and this book in particular, this series in particular, is super special to me because I remember back in high school when I would go to the library to read, I was holding this book, it's when I first discovered it, and I specifically remember my English teacher named Miss Childs saw the book in my hand and asked me, and was like, oh, I love that series, and I don't know, it's just like the first time when an adult related to me over something that I was reading. It was just a special moment. So I love this series and this is obviously a reread, um, but I randomly picked this up and and just, I breezed through it. These books are actually pretty long, um, despite like, it may look a certain type of way, but it's actually, I think this one's a little over 300 pages and it's, it's like a pretty long book, but it's just, again, a really easy read. There's Confessions of a Shopaholic, Confessions of a Shopaholic and Baby, Shopaholic to the Stars. Uh, what else was there? There's like one with the wedding. Um, I have most of them. And then Sophie Kinsella. So the funny thing is, not, not funny, coincidental thing, um, is that when I randomly picked this up, I was curious on how uh, to see what else she had written in the recent years and she actually just came out with another book called I Owe You One which it literally came out like just a few days ago and it's her first book that she's written um, in the past few years so I was super excited I was like oh my gosh this is a sign because this was one that I just grabbed off the shelf and I was like oh I really feel like rereading this and then I looked her up and she just came out with a new book and I'm so excited to read it it's gonna come soon in the mail other than the shopaholic series she also has a few other books not related to the shopaholic series one of them is called 20s girl which is also one of my favorite books and I'm gonna reread it this year too another one is called um, 
uh, I've Got Your Number, which I actually read for this month, so I'll be talking about that uh, in my February wrap-up. Um, and just like a few random ones that, again, aren't related to the Shopaholic series, but they're so funny and they have that similar tone of, I guess, like wit and humor and a lot of internal dialogue. Her characters are just so funny. Like, I think she's one of the few authors where I read when I really want something like good for my soul like it actually makes me laugh out loud and yeah she's just i really really love sophie kinsella so i highly recommend um her series of books to anybody the next one was crazy rich asians i've had this book for such a long time also i'm keeping my books on the desk because my dog will bite them and i've had this book for such a long time but it's it was like the time to read it and I actually picked this up because of one of the booktubers that I was watching and she was reading Crazy Rich Asians and she was just talking about it and I was like I should really get around to reading that book so I watched the movie like the week that it came out and honestly I mean I feel this way about everything but I totally should have watched I mean read the book before watching the movie because books are always better and no spoiler alerts but is this a spoiler alert okay I don't want to say anything but okay but then again the movie has been out for a while so if you haven't watched it then you probably have heard of spoilers anyways but it's just better and it's different and yeah and again this is a pretty long book too I was very surprised um because it seems like a quick read but it's kind of not I mean I finished it in like I think three days it's a little it's like 530 pages so it's long and it's actually a trilogy and it's I believe that the second and third ones will be made into movies I'm not sure about the third one, but I'm pretty sure the second one. And of course I ordered the second one. It's coming in the mail too, so I'm excited for that. Um, but this book basically follows a New Yorker named Rachel Chu. And it's like K-drama in a book, except not, except yes. Um, K-drama in the sense of kind of the typical storyline, but... It's different in the sense that it really expresses the different, um, I guess, the extent of wealth in Asia. Um, and the movie was so vivid and bright and beautiful. I think the cinematography was amazing, which is why so many people fell in love with it. But again, plot-wise, love the book. The book was definitely better. And I don't know if it's unique in the storyline per se to be honest but I think being made into a movie was a very big shift in future of especially with an Asian representation which was like a big deal but yeah so and I gave this ooh and I gave a uh, shopaholic I actually think I gave it four stars and then crazy rich Asians I think I gave four star three or four stars as well and for me three stars is like good for me three stars is like a a solid b plus a minus four and five is like really good so that's only why but good book recommend next one is mitch albums the next person you meet in heaven do you see this is a new book like look what my dog already did she she's teething right now and it's just not not good but this book finished it in one sitting mitch album i honestly if you're not a reader or if you know people like you want to recommend books to someone i feel like starting off with mitch album mitch album is such a solid recommendation seriously to anybody at any age at any stage of life because his books are so unique in the way the creaking it's seriously harley can you come here please Thank you, sweetheart. His books have such, his writing style is so like <laughs> simple, but profound. And it's like the type of writing and the type of storyline where it really just makes you feel the extent of human, I don't even know. It just makes you feel a type of way. I am not a, a big crier in books. I'm a huge crier in real life. I cry at everything. But for some reason, like reading, it doesn't take a lot to make me cry through, like, I mean, I'm sorry. It does take a lot to make me cry through books. And I think out of like the few that I've cried through in my head, in my, uh, 
what is it, time lifespan, it would probably be Nicholas Sparks and Mitch Album. And this book, I was like a mess at the end of it because um, it's just so good. Like, just read it. And if you don't know anything about The Next Person You Meet in Heaven, it is the sequel to The Five People You Meet in Heaven, which was one of his way earlier books. I don't know how many uh, years ago that was written because I remember Tuesdays with Maury and The Five People You Meet in Heaven was one of my... Oh my gosh, you see my dog. I'm sorry. Was one of the... Hi! She's a chihuahua Maltese, by the way. Yeah, she's so teething right now. Oh, it literally says, the long-awaited sequel to uh, the New York Times bestseller, The Five People You Meet in Heaven. And basically, The Five People You Meet in Heaven um, is a story of someone named Eddie, and he's a maintenance worker at an amusement park. And he basically gets into an accident. There's an accident, and he dies, and he goes to heaven. And it, the story is of the five people he meets there. And this one is basically the sequel to that book. So it's actually the girl that he saves her story of how it affects her life and then moving forward on the five people that she meets. So I actually didn't know how he was going to continue this series because I haven't read the five people you meet in heaven in such a long time. Like I like it's almost been like 10 years. No, not 10 years. Like seven or eight years I think since I've last read that book. So I'm going to read it and also because I don't even know where my book went. So I think I have to buy another one, which is totally fine. I honestly had no idea like what to expect. I didn't know how he was gonna continue the story because all I remember is like this guy died. Like what more can you do? But I didn't realize it was actually gonna be like a strict continuation of the, the original story. So I found that really interesting and it's still so fresh. Like he has such a way, like such a gift for the way that he writes. It's so simple. Like. Again, I highly recommend Mitch Album to anybody who has a hard time reading or like just wants a really like truly heartfelt, you need like a life lesson type of thing. That's the thing with Mitch Album. It teaches you like life, valuable life lessons, I feel like. It makes you reflect a lot on your own life. Like I think every single one of those books that I've read, I felt that way. Okay, and... The last book that I've read is Nicholas Sparks 2x2 and this book, um, you'll know more in the future, but I'm a huge Nicholas Sparks fan. I collect, I, I believe I have every single one of his books. He has a lot and I have almost every single one and this is one of the more recent ones. It's not the most recent one. The most recent one is called Every Breath, which again, is coming in the mail. I did, I ordered a whole bunch of books. I'm sorry, it's just going my dogs are just crazy right now um it's basically a book about this guy named russell who um has like the seemingly perfect life and one day his wife and he has a daughter too named london it basically tells the story of his wife leaving him and then what happens from there and I'm not ruining anything because it's literally on the back in a matter of months he finds himself without a job or a wife caring for his young daughter in London and he's struggling to adapt to a new and baffling reality blah 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 this book also is very long it's about 500 pages honestly unfortunately out of all of the oh and I gotta say I was looking over here because Okay, so Mitch Album, I gave 5 out of 5 stars. I'm sorry, I'm like so like frazzled right now. It's because my dogs are so distracting and I really want to film this. 2 by 2 I gave 1 star and it was my least favorite Nicholas Sparks book because honestly, you know what it is? I felt that maybe, maybe it was one of the more humanizing ones in the sense that this is more realistic but I think for me, I read Nicholas Sparks books to get that otherworldly sense of like romance and court and courting and, and all that other stuff. So for me, like this was just, it was like too realistic. And I've also felt that it didn't, it wasn't a big 
like character or plot development I felt that it was very predictable and I felt that it was like very draggy too I mean again it's almost 500 pages and I knew what was gonna happen and it was just so like there was no major oomph there was no major climax it was just pretty for me like the whole time so that's why I was like eh it's okay though I'm still a hardcore Nicholas Sparks fan and I will still buy every one of his books <laughs> um but yeah, it was just like very whatever. I gave it one star. Um, this is one of the ones that I was actually holding on to for a really long time. And I just didn't get around to reading. And I finally read it. And it was very disappointing. But again, Every Breath, which is his newest book, is coming through mail very soon. Very blah, blah, blah. Very soon. So, you know, hopefully that one will be a little better. Um, yeah. And just moving forward again i have a lot of new um books coming in through mail so maybe i'll do a haul and right now what i'm currently reading just to let you guys know is um through audible i'm listening to where the crawdads sing which is by delia owens i believe i'm pretty sure that's her name and it's one of the new releases it's so good so far guys i can't wait to talk about this in my February wrap-up but basically I mean this is my first audible read I just got audible and I gotta say I'm loving it it's like the perfect thing for my commute to work and this book in general it's just so good and I'm probably honestly gonna buy it after I'm done listening to it because I want to like I want to have the book for a future reading and then I'm also reading um, through the actual book it's called 22 Britannia Road and it's a historical fiction based on um, the aftermath of World War II and how it affected a family um, a Polish family who got separated and again I don't want to get too much into it because I'm going to talk about this in my February wrap up but those are the two things that I'm reading right now um, and then again I ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon so that's all coming in and yeah so yeah that's it for my February wrap up sorry for all the noise and just for all the frazzleness but I'm super excited to continue on YouTube YouTube booktube which is YouTube um, yeah and thanks for watching until next time bye bye